Boyle's Law. From the previous video about the concepts of Boyle's Law, we know that Boyle's Law investigates the relationship of, relationship of pressure and volume, and we found out that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship or indirect relationship at constant temperature and amount of gas. And so the expression, the mathematical expression of Boyle's Law is P1V1 is equal to P2V2. This is the format of a mathematical equation of two variables that are inversely related. The common um, real-life application of Boyle's Law is when you blow bubbles underwater. If you blow bubbles underwater and if you look at from the, from the point where you blow and then the bubbles are expected to always go up, as it goes up, the size of the bubbles increases because you know that at the, at the lower part, at the deeper part of the water, the pressure is really high. So the pressure is high outside. That means the size of the bubble is smaller. As it goes up, pressure decreases. Therefore, the gas inside the bubbles have more time, are, are more energetic, and they can expand the volume of the bubbles such that you would see that the volume increases as it moves to the surface where the pressure is lower. So that's a real life example of your Boyle's law. So let's apply P1V1 is equal to P2V2 equation in solving some problems regarding Boyle's law. Let's start with this. If a container holds 500 ml of CO2 at 20 degrees Celsius and 742 torr, what will be the volume of the CO2 of carbon dioxide if the pressure is increased to 795 torr. So in every gas loss, because you have two states in gas loss, therefore you need to be able to pinpoint what are your initial variables and what are the final variables so that you'll be able to substitute the right values. So in this case, you know that there's 500 ml of CO2 at 20 degrees Celsius and 740 torr. And it says that the pressure is increased to 795 torr. What will be its volume? So the 20 degrees temperature here is not considered, even though it's mentioned. But it says that you are to get volume if the pressure is increased. So that means temperature is not part. So therefore, that's a constant variable. And you won't include that anymore in the calculations. So what's our initial so you have V1, which is 500 ml, and then you have P1, which is 740 torr. The temperature, because it's constant, you may not put it there anymore because it doesn't change. And the final pressure, it says there, because it is increased, it became 795 torr. So therefore, it's obvious that you're asked for v2 so because it's pressure and volume obviously this is a Boyle's law problem so we use p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 equation so how to get v2 you know that to get v2 here you need to divide both sides by p2 so you can cancel out your v2 so v2 therefore is equal to p1 v1 over p2 before you substitute, think about or investigate first. Look at your units. If the units are okay, if you need, if because it's the common variable, the pressure is the common variable here, that means um, you can easily, you have to know that your pressure units have to be the same before you can um, substitute it. In which case, TOR and TOR, so you're okay, you're safe, so you can substitute it right away. So P1, V1, so that's 740 TOR times V1 of 500 ml over P2, which is 795 torr. So we're good, and you'll see that the torr will cancel out, and the final unit is ml, which is okay because the problem doesn't state what should be the volume, so just use the default volume in the problem. So you would, in putting this in the calculator, you'd see that it's V2, is equal to 467 ml and you have to put 
the type of gaseous substance in this case it's carbon dioxide so the final answer is final volume becomes or changes to 467 ml of carbon dioxide when the pressure is increased so you would expect because this is inverse relationship check whether your answer is correct you know that it's an inverse relationship because pressure is increased therefore your volume should decrease so it should be lower than 500 as seen in the final answer it's lower than 500 so therefore your answer is correct and logical okay so i hope that you try this out in your notes and take notes of this so that um, you'll be able to apply this in future future problems okay so let's um, look at the next video for the next problem that you need to solve for ball slow that's it for now bye